Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Sutliff, health educator and registered dietitian for Optimize for Life. I'm here to present the nutrition tip for the month. This month, we're going to talk about the daily nutrition checklist. If there's one question or one comment that people make to me on a regular basis is, can you put me on a diet? And more specifically, can you give me a specific list of foods to eat or a specific diet to follow? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put together 25 years of experience of principles of how to plan your daily uh, nutritional intake. And so what I want to do is uh, show you right here on this uh, refrigerator, what we have is our daily nutrition checklist. And these are the things that we uh, consume, my wife and I, on a daily basis. This is, the, this is basically the basis or the principles that we follow on a daily basis. So we have a little checklist here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post this on our Facebook page. And you can print these out and you can use them, put them on your uh, refrigerator, put them on the counter, wherever, wherever you'd uh, most likely use them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down this list and show you how to apply this to your life regardless of the time of the year, whether it's holiday time, summertime, year-round. These are the principles that we base our daily nutritional intake on. And there's a little box over here you can check off that you uh, ate those foods and then the next day you can see, uh, look back and see how you did in the day before and improve upon that. So I'm going to use this as a basis and I'm going to uh, demonstrate that here in a kind of overview and give you an idea of how we do it in our lives. So I'll post this on Facebook. So let's get back and uh, we're going to get started here on these five basic uh, principles that we use. In, uh, con in our daily consumption and designing our daily nutritional intake. So, first one is, is to consume at least three fresh or frozen fruits a day. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you to, to focus on the berries, also on cherries, pomegranates, oranges, plums. These are the most nutritious fruits in the uh, fruit kingdom and really want to look at the berries. And so, like I said earlier, you could either do them fresh or frozen. Sometimes frozen is a more economical way to buy and more nutritious. You have to remember that these blueberries were picked at the peak of the season when they were at, uh, the most ripe. And they were so fragile that they flash froze them, put them in containers, and you can now ship them. Put them in the freezer, and you can pull them out as you need them. You can slip these into uh, oatmeal, cereals, whatever you're going to be using. You can eat them by themselves. Okay, you can always slip them into a uh, blender and throw it in here with some other uh, foods and make a smoothie uh, or eat them raw. I even like to take my fresh fruit, put it in and blend it up and use that as a basis of a smoothie. And some people say, oh, you're getting way too much sugar. Okay, what I'm using is, is the whole fruit here. And I'm also going to show you some other foods that I mix in there with, there, uh, with these foods so that there's actually more fiber so that it doesn't spike the blood sugars. But again, we're focusing on the berries, the pomegranates, the oranges, and uh, kiwis, and things like that. Real nutritious foods, real nutrient-dense. But we want to get at least three servings a day. And roughly a, a serving with the fruits is typically around a cup. That's a serving. So that's, that's the first thing. And I started with that because a lot of times we use these for breakfast. You can also use these for a dessert. Or you could just use them for a standalone meal maybe later in the day when you're winding down for the day's uh, activities and so forth. The second principle, and this is a principle that my wife and I have practiced for years now. What you want to do is you want to have at least one very large green salad a day. No penalty for more than one, but you want to at least get once a day. And so when I talk about a green salad, what I want you to be using is the, uh, is the dark leafy green vegetables, such as here we have a blend of romaine and we have some um, cilantro in here and some basil in here. You could throw some kale in here, some spinach. Uh, but we always start with a huge, uh, a, real, a real large uh, base of greens. And I'm talking about entree size. I'm talking about start out your plate. Now that, that's a guy size, but maybe you want to be a little bit less for the ladies. Okay, depending upon your appetite, maybe you eat as much. Now, we start with the green base, but as you can see here, we, we shred up some uh, cruciferous vegetables such as purple cabbage here. Uh, sometimes we'll throw in some broccoli in, inside and, and uh, or on top of the salad. You can also mix in some other foods that I'm going to be talking about in a little bit, like the seeds and the nuts. You can also throw in the legumes. Okay, so always have 
at least one large serving entree size of a green leafy vegetable. Now, if you want to take and put this inside a tortilla or you want to do something else with it and make it into a veggie wrap, that's fine. Whatever you want to do, a little variety. And in fact, we even, we even sneak in some greens, which is real common now, but we even slide in some greens, some kales and things like that with our fruits, our fresh and frozen fruits. Put it in here, blend it up, and you don't even taste the greens. That I used to think that would be very bitter. Uh, obviously, you, you do it to taste and flavor that you would like. But again, so the fruits we started with. The next thing we did is we started with a large green salad at least once a day and adding in cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables, which are some of the most nutrient-dense foods as well and very uh, protective against cancers and uh, other, other types of uh, diseases and things like that. So that was rule no, uh, principle number two was at least one green salad a day, and then throw in some tomatoes. Tomatoes are very nutrient dense as well. Uh, you can throw them on top as a flavoring, or just kind of throw in uh, a little smorgasbord of vegetables here. You can see we threw in some carrots. Sometimes we'll throw in some uh, raw onion. Maybe we'll throw some pepper in there for a little variety. But that's the green leafy vegetables, and then adding in some cruciferous vegetables with them. Okay, principle number three is we think about that as maybe that's enough vegetables, but then we also want to look at maybe bringing in some a variety of cooked vegetables, and again, including some steamed green vegetables, and also throwing in some mixed vegetables, maybe in a stir fry. And you're putting it over some wild rice or some uh, other type of grain, or just what I'll do a lot of times too, is we'll do a stir fry, and then I'll put it over the top of the green leafy, green leafy vegetables here. So that's another way to look at it. A uh, little variety and so forth to try to get some more vegetables in your diet. Again, these are the most nutrient dense foods on the planet, the green leafy vegetables are. Okay, they're also going to be very low in calorie, but full and packed full of nutrients that your cells need and that can regenerate and help build new cells and also protect against disease. So we started with the fruits, at least three fruits a day. Okay, then we went to the green leafy vegetables with some cruci cruciferous vegetables thrown in. And then the next thing we want to do is throw in maybe some st steamed greens, some cooked vegetables. When I talk about cooked vegetables now, I'm not talking about microwaving them. Okay, you don't want to uh, zap them and, and, and nail them with a high heat, short period of time. What you want to do is you want to have uh, just slightly cooked uh, vegetables. And that way they're uh, still a little bit what they call al dente or a little bit crisp. And you're not denaturing a lot of the nutrients. Okay. That's, rule, that's principle number three there. Number four now, we're going to talk about bringing in the, the beans, peas, lentils, and so forth, what we call legumes. We've got a couple different varieties here. We have some uh, pinto beans, and we have some garbanzo beans. These are what we call the dry beans. Okay, These take a little bit of time to cook, and so you have a little extra preparation there, but you can do some ahead of time. You can even take them and freeze them, and then bring them back out when you need to uh, heat them up a little bit and use them in your salads or your stews, maybe throwing, in, throwing them in soups. Or even what you can do is if you're in a, kind of in a pinch, uh, when you're in a hurry, you can use the canned variety and just rinse them well, okay? And uh, make sure you, you, you rinse off a lot of the extra sodium there. We'll even take some of these and put them over the top on the, on the green leafy vegetable salad that I mentioned just a minute ago. Another thing we will do is we'll take like the garbanzo beans and we'll make them into a hummus and make a hummus spread. So you want at least a half a cup to one cup of beans per day. Now the interesting thing about the legumes uh, family is that they're loaded with fiber, okay, and they're going to help balance out the blood sugar. So if you know someone who has blood sugar issues, uh, I've known people who will actually use the beans right away in the morning. Use the legumes in the morning, get that in their first meal and help stabilize the blood sugars right away in the morning, kind of sets the tone for the day. So principle number four again was at least a half a cup to one cup of beans, legumes, lentils, and so forth per day, okay? And the last thing that we use to build our meals is this, is this group that we call the uh, raw seeds and nuts, okay? And what I, what I do is I uh, basically think of walnuts as being the king of the nuts. We include a little bit of those, maybe an ounce a day, uh, raw, and maybe I even like to put a couple of walnuts on top of a bagel as kind of a little bagel uh, or d'oeuvre or something on top in the morning. Uh, regardless of how you want to do it, we have right here, we have chia seeds, we have some uh, hemp seeds, and flax seeds, and pumpkin seeds. All of these are very high in omega-3 fatty acids, and they're very nutrient-dense. Again, they're all in the raw state, and so what we do is we take these and 
and uh, we'll blend them up and add them to a smoothie, maybe our fruit smoothie over here, or maybe uh, during uh, one of our lunches or another meal, we'll take and we'll sprinkle them on top of our salad. Now, these ones that are real fine, the chia seeds, the hemp seeds, the flax seeds, uh, sometimes they, they're best if you grind them up and break them open because remember the omega-3 fatty acids are on the inside of the seed and so you want to expose that because it's very hard to chew a flax seed fine enough to open it up and get the omega-3 fatty acids out of the center of the seed. So we'll take a, a little grinder such as this, a little electric grinder, put a couple tablespoons, in fact I'll do a blend and then I'll blend up a little bit and I'll put it in a glass jar and uh, use a little bit that day and then put it in the refrigerator and every couple days I'll, I'll grind up a fresh uh, batch and then store the little extra that I have maybe an inch or two high in a glass container. Okay, so that again, that's the uh, ounce, at least an ounce a day. Now if somebody's, uh, oh, maybe trying to watch their weight and so forth, we might want to just stick to one ounce, but those who are not uh, necessarily concerned about body weight, body fat, might be able to do this a couple times a day and spread them out into different meals. Uh, we'll even take and grind up some flax, some chia and so forth and put it as a powder or flour and add it to a muffin uh, mixture. I'll even put it into cereal and add a little flavoring that way. Again, you can use it in the smoothies, you can put them in the cereals and uh, basically consume them by themselves or however you prefer to do it. Okay, so let's just recap. Again, I'm going to put this, uh, this checklist on Facebook page and uh, you can download that. Uh, secondly, you want to start out looking at the fresh or frozen fruits, get at least three a day. Uh, next, we want to make sure we get a nice, big, leafy green salad a day with some cruciferous vegetables added or a variety of other vegetables that you like. And then we want to take some steamed uh, greens and mixed vegetables, maybe put it on the top, put it on the side, however you like it, maybe put it into a casserole. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to bring in uh, some of these legumes. And so beans, peas, lentils, whatever variety you like. We like to rotate throughout the week, the, the beans and the peas and the lentils that we're eating, put them into soups, stews, put them on top of salads, use them as a main dish, however you want to do it. And then the finishing one, the, the number five principle is we use the seeds and the nuts in uh, basically in our daily eating and just kind of sprinkle them out through the meal. Again, people are concerned about them being high fat. Again, oh, we want to use the raw variety and we use them on a daily basis. So this should get you started. This should be the basis of a lifelong lifestyle change where you're actually consuming these foods right here as the basis of your diet year-round, day in and day out. Thanks for watching. And again, go on the Facebook page and download the uh, daily nutrition checklist to get you started. And you just start checking off on a daily basis. And then down the road, maybe it'll become such a habit you won't need the checklist. So thanks for watching and here's to your health. Thank you.